pretty much every hobby out there has those legendary level items. And the way you can usually tell that they've reached that level is when people who aren't really into that hobby fully are able to look at that or hear that name or see that bottle and they'll know exactly what it is even though they're not a freak about that hobby. Perfect example would be with fragrances, right? You may hear someone say one million, you know, that one million cologne, and everyone knows what that is, right? So you kind of have these fragrances that have built up this legendary status. And beyond that, you'll find that a lot of these here, at least in my opinion, are ones that just can't be outdone. So I don't have Sauvage in here. I don't have one million in here. I don't have Lamal in here. Uh, you know, stuff like that. What I've gone and done is I went through and, and I chose ones that I think can't be topped because I think all the ones I listed off there have been topped. I think that there are better flankers and fragrances out nowadays. And there's nothing wrong with those fragrances I just said at all. They're, they're fantastic. But I think that with these here, some of these are flankers, some of these are still originals and they just have not been able to be beaten yet. And I don't think they ever will. So I will provide links to these down below. And if some of these are a little bit hard to get, make sure you check my community tab every day on a daily basis, get subscribed so you see those posts. That way, if any of these do come into stock that are maybe a little bit tricky, uh, you'll have a fighting chance of being able to get it because I'm always staying up to date on that stuff. I wanna start off with Chanel Allure Ohm. So perfect example, right? Blue to Chanel is one that of course could have been in this video, but that's one, predictable, and two, depending on your taste, you know, you may be able to say that Blue to Chanel has been topped, especially when you could take that money and put it into a YSL, YEDP, or even a, a Dior Sauvage and, and get better performance out of it. It all depends on what you're after. For me, I still love Blue to Chanel, but there's been so many other versions out there that that one is kind of up in the air. It's still a legendary scent, but I wanted to shine some love on the original Allure Ohm by Chanel. Not too many people are talking about this one anymore, even though I'm sure it's still getting worn a ton by people who love it. But most people nowadays are really kind of chattering about Allure Ohm Sport Extreme and Edition Blanche and that sort of thing. This one's got lemon, peach, and a good dose of vanilla in here. It's citrus uh, mixing with sweetness and tonka bean. And it smells fantastic. It's that perfect mixture, that successful mixture of fresh and sweet. I've talked about it all the time on the channel. That mixture is what makes fragrances like this do so well, not only to fragrance enthusiasts, but people outside of the hobby as well, because it's very mass pleasing at the end of the day. You're appealing to two different crowds at the same time. To me, I don't think the original can be outdone. I love the flankers. I love a lot of the other new releases that have been put out over the years, but there's something about this DNA right here that is truly timeless and always smells amazing. And next up, Dior Ohm, okay? Now, this is going to be the original. So this is Dior Ohm original, you know, the new re-release. Now, this did just show up on Joma Shop, 88 bucks, 100 mil. People who are subscribed and check the community tab, uh, you probably got yours. There was a ton of them and it did sell out. So be checking over there on my community tab. And if it comes back in stock, I'll post about it. Or maybe it is right now. I don't know. But it could either be this or just Dior Ohm before they did this re-release. But I'm not talking about Dior Ohm 2020. I just want to make that clear. Nothing wrong with Dior Ohm 2020. Not one of my favorites, but I do appreciate kind of what they're doing with it. And I think it's very wearable. But talking about legendary scents that cannot be topped, I think this is one of them. Now, Dior Ohm Intense, amazing. Dior Ohm Parfum, fantastic. But this original DNA, after all, what really started the iris craze is still one of the best out there that you can get. Whether it's the new re-release or the original, doesn't matter, they're both fantastic. But if you ever have the chance to get your nose and get your hands on a bottle of this original DNA, either version, you gotta do it. This stuff is timeless and it's unbeatable. Now, I would now consider this next one to be a legend, okay? I really do think it's achieved that uh, place mark, that level, uh, that title, I really do think so. It's Aqua de Joe Profumo. So, you know, this is another situation where you may immediately think, oh, the original Aqua de Joe has to be in this list, kind of like the mindset with Sauvage and One Million and whatever. But I think especially nowadays, the original Aqua de Joe is not really worth picking up unless it's for nostalgic reasons. If that was your high school signature scent and now 20 plus years later, you want to kind of 
just you know have those those scent memories again and you want to wear that scent there's nothing wrong with that at all they're still producing the scent for a reason it's still a bestseller but i do think bang for your buck wise you're better putting your money almost anywhere else in the line whether it be profumo profondo or even the new edp that being said i think profumo has done so well in the community that it has achieved that level of just i mean i don't think this could be outdone. Still my favorite flanker, even though I've got a ton of love for the other two I just mentioned. This will always be it for me. It's got incense and patchouli mixing with that DNA to make it mysterious and kind of nighttime oriented. And, and it just, it smells incredible and it always will. Next up, another one that came out, I believe, yeah, 23, 24 years ago, something like that, Givenchy Pie, the original here. Pie Air is also fantastic. I love that one, but it's kind of hard to get. This one though, you can still get it everywhere for Testers as low as $44 and full presentation $54.55, so very affordable. And it is a vanilla scent, vanilla and benzoin. And this was before they were all over the place, right? Now, every brand has multiple vanilla scents and they're all over the place. But this one, they did it kind of before it was really popular to do on the men's side of things. And it smells fantastic. You know, it does have not an old smell to it, but it it doesn't smell like the new vanilla scents that they're putting out, I'll put it that way. So I don't think this smells dated, but there is a very big contrast between this and what they're putting out now, like Armani Code Absolute, for example, or something like that, where we're getting a little bit more sweet, a little bit more loud, and, and just kind of a different style. This was before all of that. And so if you don't like that new style of vanilla and you want something a little bit more traditional uh, somewhat, then check out Givenchy Pie. It's timeless and it can't be beat. Now this one here is heavily slept on, at least from what I've seen in the community. Uh, one of its flankers is talked about all the time, but this one is kind of in the shadows. It's Valentino Womo, the original. Now Valentino Womo Intense, also one of my favorites. It, it's a, an amazing iris scent, you know, kind of gets compared to Dior, Ohm Intense, Gentleman Eau de Parfum, and all of that good stuff. It's kind of right in the middle of those two, it's how I've described it. But what about this one, right? People seem to think that it, it maybe isn't worthwhile. You could just get the Intense, but there's actually quite a bit of a difference between this and the Intense and the other iris fragrances that I've been talking about. Hazelnut, coffee, and chocolate are some of the main notes here in this one. Very attractive note breakdown for gourmand lovers, and if you are, then you gotta get your hands on this one. Really nice one here with a little bit of this nutty quality. Always sounds weird to say, but if you smelled One Million Lucky, it's got that type of quality with the hazelnut. Similar deal, not saying they smell the same or similar, but that particular note and accord in particular is something that you do pick up on and it makes it unique. Uh, coffee and leather coming through to give it a little bit of a sweetness for one, but on the other hand, a little bit of a masculine edge as well from the leather. So it's a really nice combination. And while the Intense is amazing, and while there are a lot of other great fragrances out there, I think this one is still unmatched. All righty, next up, Tom Ford's Gray Vetiver. Now this is the Eau de Parfum version here, which is what you get nowadays on discounters and all that good stuff. It's vetiver, but of course it also has some citrus, like, uh, grapefruit off the top, and then some other woods like oak moss and that sort of thing, but it's really all about the vetiver. It is soapy, clean, and, and very mature, masculine, and well put together. This is just down to business. There's nothing playful about it. There's nothing fun about it. Uh, if you just want to be taken seriously, you want to smell clean and fresh and well put together, this is one of the best ones you can really get, and there's a lot of vetiver fragrances out there. Guerlain's vetiver, probably could have been in the video. Roja Parfum's Vetiver probably could have been in the video, right? But they're all different in their own way. I just wanted to choose the Tom Ford because I don't talk about it all that often, and I think it's one that you should really check out if you haven't yet. This one, I think, has also achieved legendary status in only a short amount of years. I mean, it's been out for a little while at this point, but it's, it's you know, not an OG. It wasn't released in the late 90s or anything like some of these others or, or whatever, early 2000s, but it's Prada Loam. Yeah, I think, what is this, 2016 release? Something like that. Uh, really started getting hype right when I was getting into the community. And so it's got iris, it's got neroli, some light, light woods in here, some other light florals, a little bit of citrus, but it's all about this nice, soapy, clean iris scent. It's really on the same playing field as the Tom Ford, except without the vetiver. So you kind of think of it as a great work scent, a great school scent, um, just a very nice, classy, wearable scent that you would wear when you want to be taken seriously. It's kind of what this one is all about. It's very versatile. Some might even think it's a little bit more versatile 
uh, compared to the Tom Ford because maybe this is a little bit more modern smelling nowadays with the iris being so prominent and a lot of fragrances, however you want to look at it. But I do think it's a great one that just can't be outdone. I mean, this is really one of the best on the soapy, clean iris side of things. Not to be compared to Dior Homme Original or uh, Intense or Parfum or, or Valentino Homme Intense. Nothing like those. Just because it has iris doesn't mean it's like those. It's soapy and clean and fresh and those others are completely different. This one here, Spice Bomb Extreme. I don't think that they will ever put out a flanker that will top this one. I really don't. Uh, infrared was fantastic. It's got red fruits mixing with that tobacco and cinnamon, so a little bit of a different take on the original, uh, but no tobacco or no vanilla, rather, anything like this one. Uh, the Night Visions, no, they don't even really come close. Uh, what else is there? Uh, fresh, that one's great, but it's discontinued and still isn't like this. Unless they put out Spice Bomb Extreme Parfum, which I would totally be in support of, you know, just black out the bottle fully or something and make that, even if it was a limited edition, and they amped it up and maybe added a boozy accord. I know that's crazy, me saying add booze to every fragrance, right? But they did it with Gentleman Eau de Parfum Reserve Privé. That's a great turnout. Uh, if they don't do that, though, I don't think they're going to ever top this one. I think this is the pinnacle. I think this is the best of the line. And not only that, just talking about the line, I think it's one of the best tobacco vanilla scents that you can buy on the designer market for men. Amazing stuff. Running down to the end, very unique one here that nothing else smells similar to, Dunhill Icon. This is the grape soda scent. Sounds weird, but when you get this one in and you smell it, you know exactly what people are talking about. Ooh, that, yeah. I don't want to drop this one. Um, granted, there's a lot of protection, but I don't know. It's so heavy that it, I, I don't know if it would survive that or not. Very, very top heavy bottle, very heavy bottle in general. You got to be careful when you're like me and you're used to flinging stuff around. These will get away from you. And, and especially if it falls on your foot or something, that would be a bad day. This is all about the neroli. Neroli and citrus and musk, but the way the neroli is compounded with everything else gives it that kind of grape soda smell, which again, sounds crazy, but... It's got that grape and it even has that fizziness and that sweetness that you would expect from popping open a grape soda. Sounds crazy, but it, it really does smell that way. And the crazier part is even though it has that, it still has a mature and kind of classy smell to it. Very unique, nothing else like it, and I don't think there ever will be. And last up for this one, John Varvatos Vintage. I love this stuff. Uh, one of the few from John Varvatos in terms of the sweeter, richer ones that you can still get for a good price. Um, you know, uh, Dark Rebel, Dark Rebel Rider, those have crept up in price. Uh, John Varvatos Oud, sold out everywhere. It's expensive. Um, you know, name a couple other sweeter, heavier ones. There's a Platinum Edition and some other stuff like that. But Kind of all the main heavier ones with, with the heavier notes are kind of fizzling out, but you can still get this one. Uh, a lot of the fresh ones like uh, Artisan Blue and Artisan Pure, or the original, they're still really easy to get. So I hope they don't sway away from these too much because especially this one here is amazing. It's got tobacco, suede, and balsam fur in here, and it really does have this nice mature and classy Kind of sophisticated smell to it but the tobacco is also very uniquely compounded it's something where you kind of catch it at the end like off the the tail end of the scent and it really does have this nice smokiness to it it's almost this red pipe tobacco smell it doesn't smell like an ashtray or anything crazy like that nothing too strong it's still a jaw Varvatos kind of middle range designer scent. So it's very mass pleasing, but it's also very unique as well. And again, there's nothing else out there that's like this one. And I think that's very cool, especially given the price. Alrighty guys, that's gonna do it for me. 10 fragrances that can never be outdone. These are legends. And I think that all of these are going to stand the test of time, continue to, because I already have, they're gonna continue to stand the test of time for years and years and years. And I don't really think there are too many chances for some things to really outdo these. I could be wrong, you know, it's happened with some other flankers, but I think these here are all just really solid in their own way. So check these out. They're kind of slept on, but I think you would like a lot of them. That's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.